Any idea what this machine is right here? Stay tuned to find out. Start it up. How's it going, everybody? Talking a little loft and lie today. Let's say new room. <laughs> yes, new room, somewhere different. Uh, what in the world is this? How do we use it? What does it do? How does it help my game? Uh, this is a Mitchell um, loft lie machine. So we can check the loft, we can check the lie, we can bend it so that we can change the loft, we can change the lie with that little breaker bar right there that Ryan has. That is. Well, it's not a swing weight training aid of some uh, kind. That's a piece of metal that will don't, sting. Don't you drop on your foot with it. <laughs> but um, put that back. Now. But yeah. So what we can check here, we can check loft, we can check lie, and then how does that matter? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna put this away now. Uh, what does no that matter to your game? We're gonna check that out real quick. So currently right now, this seven iron is two degrees upright. And so it's at 64 degrees. And we bent it there. We yes. took a standard club and bent it to upright and we're gonna do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. so. And so as we move through this in the bay, we're gonna check it and see um, what that does to the golf ball mm -hmm. and what that does on the bottom of the club. So obviously we're hitting off mats in here, but whenever you're outside and you have turf interaction, you're right. digging, whether you see a, a divot that's a little toe deep or it's a little heel deep, or if it looks pretty smooth through sure. there, then yeah, maybe good. Um, kind of a misconception on the loft lie stuff is it's not always bending the club so that the club lays flat on the ground mm. at a dress. It's impact that matters. It's an impact that matters. So whether you get you know, how the toe droop happens, whatever happens with the uh, flex of the shaft, all these different kinds of things go into effect there. So we're gonna check that kind of stuff out. Yeah. And see, see how it affects, see so what we see. Into the bay with two degrees upright. Two degrees upright. All right, well, we shifted back into the big bay. So yeah. um, Aaron's already attached a sticker on here. Um, got a little tape on the sole. We've got a lie board, just a piece of plastic. It's not gonna break whenever you hit on it. Um, and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna see if this is bent correctly for me, which I do not believe it is whenever I bent it two degrees upright. Uh, maybe it is and I've been hitting the wrong clubs the whole time. But um, what we're gonna see is we want, it's gonna make a mark on that piece of tape right there. And then we want that mark to be basically right in the center of it. Right. Whenever we bend it and get it to where that mark is in the center, that means that the club head is striking flat or the sole is striking flat on the ground. And that's a good thing. If it's striking on the toe, that means that the club's coming into the ground like this, has a tendency to dig the toe, club face spin open, right. coming this way, has a tendency to dig the heel, club face slam shot. So yeah, and there's, there's the different sound. ways, different fitters are gonna do different things. In fact, if you don't yes. mind, can we put spin access up here too? Yep. So I only say that because I typically don't use a loft lie board. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously being inside, it would be nice to know that. I actually go off a of spin axis a whole lot because there are some other gear effect things that could potentially come into play when you're fitting somebody. Yeah. Obviously now we're not talking about a full fitting, we're only talking about lie. Something, something else, so um, I'll be honest now too. Um, I use a lie board some, but really I use more than a lie board is the tape on the face of the golf club. Yep. And then, I have a golf ball that I got from, I got it from Callaway. I'll be, I'll be nice to him. Thank you, Callaway, it was really cool. Look, but, a uh, logo over your top left shoulder anyway. So. I got it from those guys. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the ball has a little channel carved into it. You set the channel up and down, you hit it, whichever mm -hmm. way it's going is how you bend it. You can do the exact same thing with a golf, I'm not gonna do it in here because of our screen, but a golf ball yeah, with a Sharpie that. on it. Just draw a perfect line around the Sharpie. It. Yeah, just kidding. I don't want to buy a screen. Yeah. Um, which is kind of what spin access also tells you. So mm -hmm. um, Aaron's gonna take his normal swing. Now let's go with the disclaimer here. What is your set set up to right now? I'm actually at standard right now. Are you? Cause mm -hmm. you used to be a little flat. I was a little flat. Mm -hmm. You were like a degree flat on your last set, right? Yeah, so I was a degree flat and I kept getting a golf ball that was going left. Right. And I got rid of that. So you went to standard, it squared it up. So. Mm -hmm. The one thing when you're going through a fitting process, whether it's just for your lies and a double check, understand that when fitters are doing this, there's no magical fix. If you're a 25 handicapper looking for your clubs to magically fix it, there's not. Now there's a lot we can do, mm -hmm. but it has to be done with a consistent golf swing. So that's, if you have the same what, yeah. consistent heel dive or your toes a little steep or whatever, mm -hmm. then we can help fix that via the equipment. But 
that's not going to fix if it's the issue. Bump, 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 ball is right. all over the map. You might look at some other stuff. <laughs> God, I hate that noise. Yeah, it went hard left though. It did go hard left. So there's two things. Obviously, you also have to take with a grain of salt that if path is a little bit of a thing, face angle negative two, what did, what did your impact look right like? Right in the center. Still in the center? Eh, it's a little of the heel, a not off. a lot. Yep. So something that we're doing, in fact, while Aaron's hitting, I, I, I used to fit for a long time. I worked for a couple of different companies specifically doing fitting. I haven't done it outside of just a handful of people in a while. But as Aaron's kind of getting some baseline numbers and seeing where that impact is. Yeah, I'm still a little heel. Little heel, just a little bit, like a degree or so. Yep. So something that we're also looking at too, why I say I look at spin axis. So obviously you guys are seeing a screenshot here as well. So face angle of negative 3.2, that's obviously his face. Um, that sometimes it's the person, sometimes it's the ground. And so as a fitter, you have to make, or we have to make that determination for you of how much of it is the golf club, how much of it is you maybe throwing your hands at it just a little bit. Yep. So typically when doing a fitting, and Aaron, if you don't do this, that's fine. You can tell me that. But um, what I'll do is if I'm starting to see consistent numbers, so Aaron's obviously missing it left, mm -hmm. some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that spin axis is averaging a negative six, which again, is kind of the same thing I was talking about that golf ball. It's pointing fairly significantly to the heel, mm -hmm. essentially, if you think about it the way Aaron explained it earlier. Yep. So um, with that, I would ask Aaron at this point, hey, do you normally drive a little bit more with your wrist or are you, do you feel like you're a little bit more of a flippy player? Mm -hmm. so oh, I'm actually asking that? you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I have more. Oh, you're both. That's interesting. I'm I have kidding. more of a tendency to flip. Right. So the only thing I would do in this process, and a lot of fitters will probably do this, is say, do me a favor, hit one or two more. You don't have to keep the tape on there if you don't want to, but really try and drive that wrist angle for me. See if we can get you to, and if we're getting a similar number or not. Okay. That starts to kind of give me an idea. If the person can execute that, does a couple of things, it tells me their ability level without them having to say, oh yeah, I'm a two. <laughs> there might be a two in it. Carry 300. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I want to see what their tolerance is as far as what they can and can't do. In addition, that might help square the club face a little bit. So the question becomes is, is it the club or is it the person? Mm -hmm. So if this does that and we get the same number, if, if you if he's able to extend his arm just a little bit more, don't get as flippy and you still get the same numbers, it's the club. <laughs> yep. And then we talk bend. So go for it if you don't mind. I wanna see you actually do it. Yep, you're gonna have to work for this one a little bit. Drive my uh, left arm? Uh, your left wrist angle. So you just wanna essentially get that, right, get that straighter line, less flippy almost like you're hitting a hold off. So as you can see there, Aaron obviously held that off a little bit better, <laughs> but in doing that, so my essentially path, we guaranteed he didn't flip it closed. <laughs> yeah, my path went, it's not on there, but I can tell you that it went wildly in to out, wildly positive. Oop. Oh yeah, we'll get impact location on here. So as you can see, if that bottom illustration, again, I'll probably blow this up for you guys, so I'll have to use graphics. Yay, me in editing. Club um, path went five. But in that bottle, yeah, that club path in the out, 4.9 degrees, that gray line is completely square. Mm -hmm. That blue line that's moving from the bottom of the top is his path. So, but by closing those hands down, we essentially guaranteed that, yeah, this is not meant for Aaron. <laughs> yep. Again, some fitters do that, some don't. I'm an instructor slash fitter, so I have a tendency to do that because Listen, there's people out there that'll say, oh, it's the clubs. Yeah. It's always the clubs. And, always. There, and equally, there's the guys, oh, I'm standard everything, I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is, it is 50-50, people. <laughs> yeah. The there's clubs have to be built for your consistent swing. If you don't have a consistent swing, get standard. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's hard It's hard to, hard to pick that kind of stuff. Right. So, obviously, Aaron's on the heel here. We determined it's not necessarily a swing, at least all the time. Yeah. There might be one or two in there. There's a couple. There's more than that. <laughs> um, but he is on the heel. So, what we're going to now go do, normally this is where I'd go, ah, about a degree, degree and a half. I'd probably yeah. bend it a degree, have him re-hit it. We're not doing that. We're doing cause and effects. We're going we're gonna to bend it more. Yep. A lot more. <laughs> so, it's going to go four degrees the other direction. Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> That would be all right. All right, so we're gonna move back into the loft fly room, get that bent, and then we'll be back in here. Yep. All right, well, we're back at the bending studio. Yep. And as you're about to see, 
Uh, Aaron already threw this in. We're going to, or we, <laughs> taking full credit for the manual labor of this. <laughs> Aaron uh, is going to bend this four degrees the other way. So we started out at what, Aaron? Uh, we started at 64. And we're going to um, end at. So now we're at 60. So again, a lot of times you're hearing these numbers, we're talking in terms of degrees. Mm -hmm. And it is, a lot of people will say, well, I want to go one flat from standard. Well, you have to understand what standard is. So a lot of times fitters and club manufacturers and people that actually work in clubs are going to talk in terms of degrees mm -hmm. because at least that's consistent versus. Yeah. Not. And most of them, especially the guys that have been doing it for a little bit, they're all going to, you know, talk about stand like, so like a standard seven iron, call it 62 <laughs> degrees aloft or 62 degrees aloft. Sorry. Check that 62 degree lie angle Maybe and fills. like a 34 degree loft would be like your classic right. standard seven iron. Industry standard loft on a seven iron now is more closer to like 28, I'm gonna say, 29. And that's the problem when you say standard, because if you stay standard to a manufacturer, even manufacturers differ inside yeah, their own they sets. All, they, I mean, even most of your, you know, most of your tour stuff, mm. your MBs, that kind of stuff yeah. is gonna be pretty close to that 34. Um, you know, somewhere in that range. Uh, it's like, really a plus or minus almost six degrees now. Yeah. Of loft. Of yeah. So lie has been lie, pretty lie stays pretty pretty close to Yeah, there's it, no but, advantage except for getting it fit. Yeah. To bending lie. Um and then as we're looking at it, you know, where this this little piece right here runs up, it butts up and matches the angle that, that shaft is on, and then in turn it pops out down here. Mm -hmm. There's a white line. And Aaron like the, to take credit on the first try, he got it right on the 60. I'm not gonna zoom in because we want to feel good about himself. Drilled it. But <laughs> um, yeah, so then whatever that number is, it equates to whatever the line angle is. So now hypothetically, we're mm -hmm. gonna go back in the bay in a second. Mm -hmm. And this should take that spin axis to a more positive number. Now again, I think Aaron's about a half degree to a degree flat based on what you've played before and just mm -hmm. knowing your swing. Yeah. Um, I don't think you're going to see as drastic of as a right as we saw of a left Correct. from Aaron. Yep. We'll see if I'm right. See if I'm good or not. See if we see it. All right. Let's go check it out. All right. So we got a new piece of tape. Yep. On the bottom, nice and freshy. So went flat again. Hypothetically, I'm going to leave that screen over on the right up. Because cool. why not? Yeah. Well, let's see. We see. Gives us stats. Oh, I hope I'm right. Just move a little right. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yep, it's a little high right. Again, dang, I'm good. So doesn't move as, oh, that's toey. Yeah. <laughs> so again, we're not really looking at, when we say toey, we're not talking about the golf ball. Yeah, we're not talking golf about- Golf ball center. We're not talking about impact location. Right. We're talking about where the sole or the bottom of the club makes yes. contact with the ground. Struck it well, but just like we talked about when bending it to 64 degrees, Obviously way more toe interaction now, mm -hmm. which is gonna cause that heel to freely move a little bit longer, which leaves the club face just a hair open at impact. You, do you remember what your impact location or your face angle was prior? Negatives. It was, yeah, it was negative It was average. Well, there's a 2.5 on there and I'm averaging negative 0.5. Yeah. So you so it's a one it, five two. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, and now he's up to a positive two five. So we've completely flipped that script. Mm -hmm. Again, because Aaron is I think traditionally a little bit flat. It didn't move as much right as they wanted to left. Yeah. But again, that's just your swing, your body type, but that goes into how much importance is placed on lie. Yeah, like like my, my thing is I tell people is if you take, if you're gonna go play American football and wow. you take- well, no, you Shout out to of, my five UK viewers. Yeah, there's people in the UK <laughs> that are watching. So, uh, so if you're gonna go out and play that and I'm, six foot three and then i'm standing next to a guy who's six foot eight 370 pounds we're probably not going to wear the same pads and helmet all right so um so yeah like i tell people you know this kind of stuff getting fit is like any other sport any other thing you're playing in like football i'm not going to wear the same size pads that a defensive tackle or offensive lineman is going to wear i'm just not going to so why would somebody who's five foot ten grab the same club as somebody who's six foot tall mm -hmm. has the same club as somebody who's six foot four. Like, why are you all hitting the same golf club? You're not, it's, it's not, you should not be doing that. The length should be changed. The lie angle should probably be changed. Like those are all things that are very easily changed that well, make something for you. And the crazy part about that is not even so much the height, it's the distance from the ground to your hands. Yeah, like your knuckles, knuckles mm -hmm. to the ground is a number that they always look at for, for all that stuff. And you'll see, I mean, I had a kid in here the other day that was like six foot three, but whenever he's set up, 
his arms like hung down to here. Had a bit of a wingspan, yes, didn't he? Yes, he had some <laughs> long arms. Um, and counteracting, I've seen short guys that have super short arms. You're like, oh, that's, so there's, I, I fit some guys that are less than six feet tall into something a little longer. Mm -hmm. And then counteractively, I've had some guys that are taller that have super long arms that actually go into something a hair shorter. Mm -hmm. So it all depends. When it boils down to it, it's all about the lie. Yes. And that's really what we want to achieve what is that perfect get, lie. What do we want to get that set at? How do we get that thing set so that we can try to make the most consistent strike with the ground that we can. And we are talking a lot about club fitting in this. This really wasn't meant to be a full club fitting video. Yeah. I know we're referencing some of stuff because it's hard to not talk about club fitting when you're doing lie. Talking about lines, yeah. um, I do think that's a very useful video of the importance of being fit as a whole, not just lie, loft, length, because you start introducing length to loft, it changes yeah, And it. all the different shafts and all Which that stuff. Which we can go down that rabbit hole another yeah. day, but. So lie angles, if here it is right here. I'll throw it out in front of you. Oh boy. One, one degree off of your lie angle, two upright, two flat, call it four to five yard miss on dispersion if you do everything exactly right that you're trying to do. So there, if you make the there's perfect There's the asterisk swing, right there. Yeah, <laughs> some of it comes onto you, but if you do everything right and it's off a degree, it's call it a four yard miss. So if you're, if you, feel like you are putting a very consistent swing on the golf ball. You feel like you're squaring the face up, your hands are doing, you're doing some stuff right, right. but you keep consistently getting this kind of little, little bleeder to the right, this little fall off left. Maybe maybe come to somebody, come see us, whatever, and, and get your lies well, checked. And, and just a little bit of a disclaimer on what you just said there. It, even if you don't feel like you're doing it perfectly, but you're doing it regularly. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you're, I've, I've met guys that swing just a hair over the top, literally just, one and a half degrees over the top, but it's on that 1.5 almost every yeah. time. There's nothing wrong, like listen, there's not, yes, I mean obviously we'd rather see you a little bit inside, but with that being said, we can make a golf club fix it, but it's the regular, now if you're 12 degrees, <laughs> Yeah, you need a lesson. No, we got we got to fix some stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's go standard, a 12 pack of lessons, and then we'll have a conversation at the <laughs> yeah. end. Um, but yeah, it's about being consistent, so. Mm -hmm. But lie angle is probably the most underestimated <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thing in amateur it's, golf. It's something that I can tell you with 100% assurance, every single person walking around on the PGA, LPGA, oh, Corn Ferry, European, they know exactly what the specs of their golf club is. And if they don't, then their caddy or their coach does. Yes. But, and it will be the same. Well, and I guarantee time. that those golf clubs probably go through a Mitchell Waffle Eye machine. Every two weeks. I was gonna say probably every event. I think that they get double checked every event. I know wedges get double checked every event because they're the easiest to yeah, accidentally mess up, but they're checking grind and, and right. Mm -hmm. So their equipment now, we're not saying that you do that because obviously if you're a casual golfer and you play once, let's say you play three times a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, you're not doing the same damage to a golf club that a tour pro. Does. No, you're not putting the same reps on it. Um, that's also something to be said about that. Um, you know, playing golf um, in Texas in the summertime. If you're playing a whole lot in the summer on lots of hard pan, yeah. maybe you go get it checked it. after the summer is over with when you're going into Seasonally. like the off season. Yeah, just check them whenever you get done and maybe you check them again whenever, before you start the next season or right. something. Just and get them, yeah. There's a lot of facilities, obviously you're in the Fort Worth, I'm gonna throw Dallas in there too. Mm -hmm. Mix, there's this other city on the other side of Fort Worth we talk to every once yeah. in a while. But um, you can come in here, obviously there's gonna be fees involved with some of this stuff, but mm -hmm. you can very simply just get your numbers checked. You don't have to obviously go to PGA Superstore Golf Galaxy, wherever happens to be close to you or your local. During the pandemic, go to your local guy because I guarantee he took a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go to the local guys. They need, they need all the help um, we can but get. But if they have the ability to do club work, i.e. a Mitchell Offly machine, mm -hmm. um, just ask them what they'll charge to get numbers. You might not want to bend them. You just yeah. want to verify they are what they are and they'll most of the time even provide you with whatever the stock numbers from your set mm -hmm. of clubs are supposed to be. Yep. Obviously they might not know if you've bent them in the past or if you ordered them a little bit differently, they're gonna only know the information given. Yeah, they're just gonna know exactly what it reads out. The only thing is that if you did order them, say Aaron ordered a set upright, realized whoop, that was a mistake, bent them to a degree flat. Obviously they've moved two degrees already. If we pull the serial number from his clubs, then we would obviously know. If they were bent post manufacturing, we would have no idea. You'd have to actually tell us. Yep. So. Anyway, well, that carried on a little longer than I thought it was going to. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's important. It's definitely definitely something that you should get checked out. And uh, again, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 
Bring them on over. I'd be more than happy to, to check them for you, and you can sit in there with me through the whole process, and we can talk it up. And you don't want to. See what's I'm going just kidding. on. <laughs> Perfect. Well, yep. Let's um, do something else. Thank you all for checking in.